Okay, divine command theory, what are its basics? Well, Natural law theory says what makes something right is if it's been built into nature and it's the natural fabric of the universe. Uh, is a certain way and it is in accord with the natural fabric of the universe. Divine command theory says what makes something right is God's commanding it. It's really a simple, straightforward theory at bottom. God's commanding it is what makes it right. And there are two camps here. Like I mentioned, there are the voluntarists and the non-voluntarists. The voluntarists say God could do anything he wanted and it would be right. Okay, so um, for the voluntarists, God could tell me to uh, murder all my colleagues in the philosophy department. And if God actually said it, not me just hearing voices in my head, it would be right. Okay, that's a joke. That's a joke. All right. Um, just like the volunteer's position. Just like the volunteer's position. No, 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 no. Seriously, there are real like philosophers who defend the volunteer's position down through the centuries. Really, man. Um, it's the dominant position in Islam. I'm not kidding, man. And Islam has like serious philosophy uh, that they're doing down through the centuries, very respectable philosophy. Uh, if Allah says it, uh, it's justifiable. Yeah. Um, the non voluntarists Bill Craig is a non voluntarist uh, Bill says, um, and others, he's not alone, lots of other non voluntarists uh, God can't just do anything. He can't just say we can do anything and make it right. God can't act against his nature. God's nature is to be good. And God cannot not be good because it is in God's nature to be good. So when God commands something, it is good because that is God's nature is to be good. Okay, um, maybe metaphorical references could be made here. Uh, humans can't breathe in water. Fish can't breathe out of water. God cannot do an immoral deed because it is not in his nature to do something immoral. It's not possible for him to tell a lie or to steal or to... Um, right to uh, to cheat or something like that because it's not in his nature now the voluntarist non-voluntarist split arises as a result of the euthyphro problem which is a problem that's like struck at the heart of divine command theory down through the centuries for all time okay now i've uploaded to blackboard um, an excerpt from the IEP article on divine command theory. And I'm not going to go over it right now since I don't have time, but I want to commend it to your attention and uh, ask you guys to go ahead and read the article in its entirety uh, after this class. Okay, um, the Euthyphro problem is a problem that arises in one of Plato's dialogues and probably I'm going to guess most of us have familiarity with the Euthyphro problem. Raise your hand if you do. Whoa, really? I feel bad. I thought everybody would raise their hand too. No worries. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Um, the Euthyphro problem. Euthyphro dilemma, maybe you've heard of. Okay. All right. No worries. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Uh, this is a big objection to divine command theory. goes all the way back to the Socratic dialogues. Euthyphro asks Socrates, they, they uh, are operating in, a, in the context of a discussion where uh, it's not monotheistic, it's polytheistic. And also they're not necessarily talking about morality as such, they're talking about piety. Um, but piety is synonymous with our morality these days. Euthyphro says, uh, is it moral because the gods love it? Or do the gods love it because it's moral? Let me say that one more time. Is it moral because the gods love it? Or do the gods love it because it is moral? 
And updated to contemporary vernacular, we might say, um, is it moral because God wills it? Or does God will it because it's moral? In other words, which is conceptually prior? This era where God determines morality, or this era where morality determines what God wills? And the voluntarists respond by saying, well, this era. God determines morality. Whatever God wills becomes moral. What the non-voluntarists say, what's actually going on is a co-extension where God and morality are co-extensive with each other because it is not in God's nature to be immoral. God simply is moral. He is the foundation of morality, and morality is in God. It cannot be found anywhere else other than a, in a foundation in God. Okay, um, let me pause and ask if there are questions or comments about that. Does everybody kind of understand the youth pro problem? It's a real abstract sort of a problem, and it's kind of parochial to divine command theory. It's not a problem that arises for natural law theory necessarily. All right. Okay, let us uh, move on from there and talk about, um, oh shoot, I'm out of time. Let me talk about one other thing that's related to the uh, the my presentation of divine command theory here and it's real short and I'll just throw it out there real quickly and then uh, I'll only be able to cover just a very little bit of it today and then uh, we'll talk more extensively about that and other divine command theory things next time. Okay, um, did you guys know that there's actually a moral argument for God's existence? It's pretty good too. I find it convincing. It has two steps. Okay, um, the first step is, if no God, no objective moral values. That is, if God did not exist, then there would be no objective moral values. Okay, if God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. However, second step, objective moral values and duties do exist. Therefore, step three, God exists. It's a real simple argument, a very powerful one. I think I should convince them. Okay, now the way to attack the argument is either by attacking premise A or by attacking premise B. Relativists might deny that objective moral values exist, but if you're a relativist, you've got a lot of other problems at the same time that you've got to deal with. Okay, um, others, like the evolutionary theorist that I was reading with the evolutionary explanation of morality, might attack the notion that if God does not exist, then there are no objective moral values. But it's hard to see why one should be motivated to be moral if the best reason that can be provided is something like for the sake of the continuation of the species or for the sake of, um, of some overarching process of natural selection so that you're in conformity with it. So you can, you can reject this first premise, and I have seen theorists uh, do so, but you've got to deal with a lot of other problems if you do. I'm out of time, so I don't have time to actually explore the moral argument at length. Are there any questions about, the, I guess, the content of it? Does it make sense as an argument, whether or not you agree? Maybe I should take a poll so we can actually determine truth by virtue of democratic uh, processes. Do objective moral values exist? Wow, the men are like, yeah, and the women are like, no. <laughs> 
Will you vote for Donald Trump? No, I won't. I'm not actually going to. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I won't try to force you to either, because I don't I don't want to vote for the man. Okay. Um more on that next time. All right. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll explore the moral argument for God's existence in addition to other uh, issues surrounding divine command theory in our next class session.